and welcome back for another episode of Star Charts. In this episode, we are going to be talking about the world of Terra. Terra is located here in the eastern portion of the UEE, and there are a number of jump points. There are five jump points leading to one to the Killian system, one to the Goss system, one to Keel, one to Baker, one to a yet undisclosed world, number one, and possibly in another jump point that's yet to be discovered. So let's go ahead and zoom into Terra and check out the system. The Terra system. Shining jewel of the United Empire of Earth. Terra 3, commonly referred to by its star's name, has made great strides towards becoming the cultural focus of the Empire. While diehard Earth loyalists would dispute such a claim, there is no doubt that Terra has its finger in the pulse of the civilized galaxy. From the increasing inflow of mega-corporate headquarters to the system, to the influence of Terran-originated music on popular culture, Terra is unquestionably the closest thing to a rival Earth has ever produced. History. The Terra system, then designated 342A, was first charted in 2508 and explored as part of a five-system long-run research expedition in 2516. When the first long-distance magnetic relay images of the system's third planet resolved, the explorer crew immediately knew they had hit it big. A natural super-Earth located squarely in the star's green band. Terra 3 was immediately recognizable for its astounding similarity to the untouched Earth, lush, verdant, and brimming with natural resources. Terra's colonization was immediately obvious. Within two years, no fewer than seven colonial slow ships had been dispatched to the world. Astrophysicists soon staked their own claim with a startling discovery. Terra's system's Unique location and makeup meant that it was a strong jump point hub. Like Sol, Terra is a G type main sequence star. Unlike Sol, its outer planetary system never formed. Without the mass diffusion caused by gas giants, and with the star's location in the center of a dense stellar cluster, extremely stable jump points arose easily. Thus far, five jump points have been charted, and scientists believe that a sixth is almost a certainty. Theoretically, as many as 24 could exist, although the odds against most of them ever being stable enough for transport are astronomical. Exobiologists, too, had an early interest in the system. Massive stone ruins, clearly indicative of intelligent life, were discovered on Terra 3's southern continental mass. No other evidence of an ancient civilization has been uncovered on this planet, creating one of the most debated archaeological mysteries of our time. Terra 3 was the twelfth planet colonized by the United Empire of Earth in four centuries. Owing to its jump network and location, it has evolved into a massive trade hub. Keel, Baker, Killian, and other named systems are short hops from the star. The world's plentiful resources, cultivated carefully so as not to impact the environment, have fueled the Empire's eastern expansion program, the planets. Aero, Terra-1, a nondescript rock world incredibly close to its star. Although rich in certain minerals, attempts to harness resources on Aero have been largely unsuccessful due to the proximity to the sun. Even the harshest environment suits are incapable of sustaining human life long enough to conduct factory maintenance on a world with a 95 standard Earth Day orbital period. Pike, Terra 2. The mining efforts on Pike, on the other hand, are a masterpiece of human engineering. One of the most mineral-rich planets in the galaxy, Pike is dotted with thousands of unmanned cities, churning out tons of platinum, mercury, iron, gold every day. With three times the orbital period of Arrow, Pike is still incapable of sustaining human life for an extended duration. 
Regardless, the lack of atmospheric storms and other weather events mean that fully mobile robot machinery can operate with peak efficiency and requires very little downtime. The mines and refineries of Pike have been essential to fueling Terra's expansion and to allow Terra itself to remain relatively untouched. Terra 3 Terra The capital city of Terra is Prime a beautiful bayside megacity built on the foundations of two of the original colony ships. A stark contrast to Earth's metropolises. Everything in Prime is planned by the original settlers, leading to a much greater balance between nature and civilization than is found elsewhere in the Empire. Unlike many cities, Prime's primary landing zone is located away from the city to reduce population and air congestion, a monorail runs pilots to and from their hangars. Don't let the relaxed atmosphere fool you, though. Prime has everything New York or Moscow does, from ship upgrade stores to black market opportunities. The city itself divides into two major regions, the sparkling downtown and the lower-class residential region known as the Block. Opportunities for visitors are available in both portions of the city. Terra's largest city is Quasi, in the colder southern hemisphere. Quasi is built into the shadow of a massive ruins discovered early in Terra's exploration. Quasi is considered more of a tourist destination than Prime, although several corporations operate in the region. Crusader Industries, best known for its facilities in Stanton system, operate the Platinum Bay Landing Facilities. New Austin, another initial colonization point, is as close as Terra comes to an industrial city. New Austin is a business park, home to corporations like Origin Jumpworks and Kronos Devices. The cost of living in New Austin is lower, leading to more of a blue-collar sensibility, but moneyed compared to other worlds. The centerpiece of the city is the Old Hall, a former Miners Guild meeting area now populated by factory owners, pilots, haulers, and shippers. Gen, or Terra 4. Oft overlooked is the fact that Terra's sister world, Gen, is also an inhabited world. The smaller planetoid, the outermost in the system, was terraformed roughly a century after Terra's initial settlement and is now home to the diplomatic and military aspects of the system's government. Consisting largely of military bases, imperial administration, and housing, the world represents a conscious effort in the part of the Terran system planners to separate business and pleasure. There is ongoing debate about Jen's representation in the Senate. Though the planet is well populated, the inhabitants are almost exclusively government workers. Thus far, Earth has shut down any attempts to award them representation, seeing it as a thinly veiled plot to extend Terra's influence. And this was the Terran system. And thank you for coming out and checking out this episode of Star Sharks. Be sure to tune in for additional episodes. We'll see you 